Hello, welcome to this video about polymers in cosmetics. In order to understand the vast role played by polymeric materials, we must first look at what a polymer is. Polymers are long chain molecules formed from the linking together of many smaller molecules. They can be naturally occurring, such as DNA and proteins, wholly synthetic, such as polyethylene and nylon, or somewhere in between. In the 100 years or so since their existence has been recognised by the scientific community, polymers have become an irreplaceable component in essentially every industry on Earth, including in cosmetics. Even seemingly simple products such as nail polish cannot exist without polymers, and actually have some rather interesting chemistry behind them. So let's look at this in some more detail. The most significant elements of your average bottle of nail varnish are the film former, any film modifiers, and plasticizers. The film former is, as the name implies, the base of the nail polish. It is a polymer that allows for the application of a smooth, continuous coating, or film, across the nail plate. The material of choice is cellulose nitrate, more commonly referred to as nitrocellulose, a chemically modified version of the natural polymer. It was first synthesized in the 19th century and was used as a replacement for gun cotton, but its ability to form a thin, hard surface has led to it becoming the most widely used film former in the cosmetic industry. Let's look at nitrocellulose a little more closely. This is the repeat unit of cellulose, which you may recognise as the cyclic form of glucose. Each glucose monomer is linked by carbon-oxygen-carbon -carbon bonds on the first and fourth carbons, leading to the formation of a strong backbone which is what provides strength and stability to plants. In order to form nitrocellulose, cellulose is reacted with a mixture of concentrated nitric and concentrated sulfuric acids, forming nitrate esters in place of some of the hydroxyl groups. As you can see, there are multiple possible locations for the reaction to take place, so it cannot be exactly controlled, but reaction is about five times more likely at the group circled here, on account of it being the least sterically hindered making it easier for the nitronium ion to attack. The fully nitrated polymer is used in explosives, which you can imagine you would not want on your nails, so an average of one to two nitrate ester groups per glucose ring is usually used. This is how the reaction begins. A nitronium ion, NO2+, is generated from the reaction between sulfuric acid and nitric acid, the latter of which acts as a base in the initial step as with the nitration of an aromatic compound. This electrophilic species then attacks an oxygen on the cellulose, as opposed to a carbon, in the second part of the mechanism shown here. The addition directly onto the oxygen means that the name nitrocellulose is actually a bit of a misnomer, as it isn't really a nitro compound at all. Although nitrocellulose is excellent at forming the even coating required, the film itself has some undesirable qualities. It doesn't adhere very well to the nail plate, it's not very glossy, meaning the finish is not very aesthetically pleasing, and most significantly, it's brittle, leading to the nail varnish cracking and chipping easily as it cannot flex with the nail. This brittleness is the result of an inherent characteristic of polymers called the glass transition temperature. Below this temperature, which is different for each polymer, it is stiff and hard like glass. But when heated to above this temperature, it becomes flexible, behaving more like rubber. The transition temperature for nitrocellulose is difficult to measure, due to it being near to its decomposition temperature. But all measurements are well above room temperature, hence why the film is so brittle if nitrocellulose is used on its own. One way to improve the performance and durability of nitrocellulose is to use a so-called film modifier such as the toluene sulfonamide formaldehyde resin shown here. When added to nitrocellulose, TSFR improves the adhesion and flexibility of the polymer, as well as providing a desirable glossy and water-resistant finish, making the polish more durable. However, formaldehyde is a known sensitizer, causing allergic contact dermatitis in some people, hence why it is no longer used. Another, more common way to improve the film is to use plasticizers. These are small molecules, when compared to the size of the polymer, that separate the polymer chains, reducing the interaction between the chains and making the film more flexible. 
They differ from film modifiers in that they affect the entire formulation, rather than just counteracting the unwanted aspects of the nitrocellulose. Dibutyl phthalate, or DBP, is an excellent plasticizer for nitrocellulose. It remains in solution without affecting the viscosity or consistency of the varnish. It is compatible with the film former, and it does not escape through evaporation once applied. However, it is again a suspected sensitizer and has been shown to be an endocrine disruptor, meaning that it affects hormones such as insulin and glucagon, and is possibly even carcinogenic. As such, DBP is banned completely for use in nail polish in the European Union, but not in the US, although use is beginning to decline. The most commonly used plasticizer these days is instead camphor, which although it can cause skin irritation and is toxic if ingested, so please don't drink your nail varnish, it is substantially safer than DBP. The need for developing safer formulations without these harmful modifiers and plasticizers is why research is still ongoing to develop new products that will allow us to go chip free for longer. Of course, another way to have your manicure last longer is to use a UV cured gel polish. These also make use of polymer chemistry, but this time the polymerization is actually occurring in situ. A typical formulation will consist of various monomers, usually based on acrylates such as diurethane dimethacrylate shown here, as well as a photoinitiator. Once the gel is placed onto the nail, UV light is used to induce a radical polymerization reaction on your nails, causing the gel to set hard. The beginning of the polymerization is shown here. The UV light initiates the breakdown of the photoinitiator which then adds on to a monomer in a chain growth mechanism, eventually leading to a highly crosslinked polymer due to the many opportunities for hydrogen bonding between the side chains. This leads to the formation of a very strong polymeric sheet across the nail, which is why a manicure of this type will last for several weeks, as opposed to the few days before traditional polishes begin to chip off. As well as their cosmetic use, did you know that research is being carried out at the UCL School of Pharmacy into the development of medical applications? These gel polishes would be able to deliver topical drug treatments for a variety of nail issues, and their durability means that patient compliance is greatly increased, as they will only need to see a practitioner about once a month. Isn't that cool? Here you can see a list of the resources I've used in order to create this video, which I will also put into the description so that you can have a look if you wish to. That's about it from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about an area of polymer science you may not have considered before. 